Greg, we have a world famous novelist with us today. She is one of the best selling authors in the history of books. Uh, <laughs> Barbara, I'm not that old. <laughs> Barbara Taylor Bradford. Uh, the new book is called Cavendon Hall. It's a novel, and uh, we are thrilled to welcome Barbara back to Good Day New York. Congratulations. I'm glad to be here. You're my favorite couple on television. Aww. Really? That's favorite so couple, sweet. period. <laughs> oh, that's so nice. Well, we really, we're going to unconsciously uncouple. Or consciously oh, uncouple. Yes. Consciously couple. Couple. Whatever Conscious. we're doing, we're doing consciously the opposite of whatever uncouple. Gwyneth and, and Chris did. Right. Yeah. You know, she, they've taken the Mickey out of her for saying that all over the world. Uh, they make you really? fun of her over there, too? Oh. Tremendously so. Oh, poor girl. Poor girl, but she said it. Well, well this but, book looks uh, interesting from the cover, not to judge, but uh, what's inside? Two families living at Cavendon Hall. The two families over the generations have been involved in, in the sense of the Inghams. The aristocrats have had the swans as their retainers, so they're very intermingled. And then there's the downstairs. They're not really servants. They're very privileged, but they're not quite aristocrats. And where but a family, now two families, to find drama, hatreds, jealousy, love, infidelity, adultery, ambition, everything in a family. So the two families are there. In 1913, a terrible thing happens to one of the daughters, which now could ruin the, the aristocratic family. Also, the 19, it's 1913, and the First World War is looming. So you've got all that drama going on in this beautiful house, which I invented in Yorkshire. And um, it's been compared a bit to Downton mm. Abbey. So is it, do you see a, a little similarity between Well, I'm them? writing the second book in the series. And that I, I thought of this six years ago. But when I'd done the outline, it was for two books. And I, my, I thought my publishers won't do two books, one after the other. Uh, why would would they? Um, so I did a couple of modern stories, and then when Downton became successful, they said, we've changed our minds. <laughs> what about your Edwardian series of two books? Oh, that's so, so funny. I wrote it, this one in last year. So obviously, uh, some of it is, is, is steeped in research. You, you know, you have the, the background of history there. But what yes, it's else, Edwardian England. Right. So what else inspires you? Where do you come up with the other ideas about the conflicts and the drama uh, in, in that time? Well, I know a lot about the Edwardian era. And of course, there's a lot of drama with a war because young men get uh, called up and women weep and men get killed. In fact, that war ruined the British Empire. They were broke. England was broke at the end of the war. No men, so many hundreds, millions of people were killed. Um, where do I get the inspiration from? I think from history itself. As you read about that period, you read about people, ordinary people, and what happened to them, as well as the famous. Um, it came out in England. It was on every bestseller list in, in England. This book? Yes, it came out last month in Congratulations. England. Congratulations! Yes. Are um, you ready to climb the bestseller list here in, in our town? Well, I hope so. Uh -huh. I usually do. I mean, 29 books, right? Yes, and I'm writing the 30th, which is called The Cavendon Women, which is the sequel to this. Wow. Do you write every day? Do you like force well, yes. yourself to write every single day? I don't have to for my, force myself. I'm published in 90 countries and 40 languages. You know, I'm in a business, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I'm, um, what do you call it, um, a franchise. You are a franchise. So I have to do it, whether I want to or not. But What's you your know, routine? I love it. Your routine? Up every morning about 5.30, uh, have coffee, edit what I've done the day before, make breakfast at 7.30 for my husband, um, leave him alone to eat it and go back to work and stop at 4 o'clock. And by the way, all this happens in New York. In New York. You're a New Yorker yes. now. A long time New Yorker, we love, uh, yes. we love that you're uh, one of us. Don't Thank you, you. Don't we inspire you to write a book, New Yorkers, <laughs> crazy New Yorkers, the well, crazy... Well, I've already written about how television. About, how about <laughs> Greg and me? I mean, we yes. must have something spark some kind of interest in yeah i wrote a book <laughs> <laughs> she's always pitching herself and me to <laughs> incredible Anybody authors hollywood producers here. jerry prokhar and i'm mortified right, when she does it why not star in this maybe you write your own book instead of hitting up everybody who comes <laughs> no, in no i know I've, in the book. I've got a guaranteed bestseller here okay she knows how to write the bestseller well, when bob makes this series you're going to be in it 
Really? Why not? You I'd like to be you develop an English accent. I'd love to be one of those chambermaids who's like no, looking at everybody's sock drawers. <laughs> You know what I mean? Could you picture that? No, you're going yes, to I be. Yes, I can picture you going through drawers. You're going yes. to be the lady of the manor. <laughs> yeah, she yes, will not be it. the lady of the manor. <laughs> she, anyway, Barbara, wow. Uh, it's so good to see you, Barbara. Are you doing me. any book signings that we need to know about? Anything going on? Well, I'm doing something in Wilton, Connecticut at the library. Oh, there tonight. we go. Tonight. Oh, how nice. Seven o'clock. Yes, and I'm um, doing quite a lot of radio shows, things like that. Book signings really have to be a, an event today. Mm. You know, people just don't come to bookstores. Why do they have to? They've got an Amazon. It's true. What's going to happen tonight? Are you going to read? No, I'm being interviewed on a stage at the library, which I love because it's a journalist interviewing me and it's more interesting. And then I'm signing books and I'm doing a few events like that Beautiful. in May. Excellent. Hey, do they have April Fools in England? Yeah, yes, I was going to ask the publisher to change the date. Little, <laughs> no, I'm right? not. Why is it April 1st? Some of the best things happen on April Fool's, like when I gave Rosanna a snake about did it. Did you, you see me a snake this morning? Yeah, actually, do we have it right? Was it real? I would love to. I would it was real, Barbara. Oh, it wasn't a phony one? No, I jumped out of my seat. Oh, he's a snake in the grass. <laughs> in, uh, in honor of April Fool's. All of a sudden, he became a snake charmer. Check it out. Watch this. You know what I mean? So here's my friend. Uh, oh, that, it's a beautiful that's snake. Not, that's not it's real, a real right? snake. It's, it's not, not a real snake. snake. It's a real snake. Oh my God. And she looked at her go. It's beautiful. Well, I, I would, would have done too. <laughs> so here's my her. friend. Then Rosanna grabs oh, that, a baseball bat. Anyway, so they do this in England as well. I'm glad they do. April Fools, but not with snakes. Be careful today. And this book is going to be another hit. Yeah. Uh, it's called Cavendon Hall. It's a novel by Barbara Taylor Bradford. Congratulations. Always Jenny wonderful Thank to you. have you here. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank much. You. Thanks for We're having me. We're available for inspiration if you need Yes, all right. <laughs> I'll be back. Yes. All right. Uh, it is April things. Fools Day, right? It is April Fools. And all right, Don't we went through the snake and the mask. Next up, prank phone calls. We are. Followed by a Shanti. Okay.